All right, YouTube, this is going to be part two of walking through the implementation of the view class. I mean, yeah, the view class. So I'm going to try to go a bit faster and just briefly go over the mouse pressed and mouse dragged and mouse released functions to show you how I have um, been able to get user input. So the way it works is it's, it's a drag uh, interface. So when I click and drag, right, if I just click, and then click here again, this is this is what happens. So what you have to do is click and drag the piece to the desired square and then release the mouse. And then it registers the move. So with that in mind, let's look at the mouse press method. Coordinate scaled coord. So this is my coordinate class. It's 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 probably the shortest class I have. Well, actually this is a good bit of code. I'm not sure. Oh, because it has a two string method. Anyway, what did it, it all you need to know about it is that it has two, it's immutable and then it has two integers and they're public and it's basically just a wrapper class for a point. And the idea is that I don't make a coordinate with any points other than the values one through eight. So no zeros, no nines, anything else. Uh, uh, coordinate objects are, the idea is that they're coordinates on a chessboard. So that's what all those two string methods were. If we have the coordinate four or five, it converts it to you know, D4, the, the chess notation for that. So what mouse press does is it takes this coordinate that's gonna have who knows what values. If right now my view is 600 by 600, so as I went over in the last video, you don't know exactly what the values here are gonna be. But what this function does is it takes takes a coordinate like 400, 400, and converts it into, what would this coordinate be? 6, 6 on the chessboard. So, and then move start equals scale chord. So this is a, the move start variable. Let me find it. Move start, yeah, so it's just a coordinate and it stores where the user, where the mouse was when the user pressed down. So we store move start. And then we say, if it's a left click, we clear the illustration layer. So that's just a simple way of once I implement arrows and circles and being able to illustrate the board, if you want to clear it, you just left click. And that's that. Um, draw This code right here draws the yellow square where we clicked. Pretty simple. Rectangle, get rectangle at coordinate, and then we pass in our scaled chord object, so now we have our rect. And then we just draw image into layer. Selection layer, yellow square, that rectangle. So this is all if we're drawing possible moves. Because, oh, I quit. I always quit out of it. But I have the option to disable that feature. And once disabled, of course, this code won't run. So that's why it's wrapped in an if block. Let's see, uh, possible moves. If I uncheck that, then as you see, it's not drawing the green anymore. And if I recheck it, we get our lovely green squares. So this, it gets, okay, so it discovers which team was clicked. If it was a white piece or a black piece, the way it does that is it asks the controller for the board, asks the board for the slot object at where the user clicked, and it asks that slot for the piece, and then it asks that piece for the team. So pretty long function call, a lot of functions in just that one method of figuring out um, what team was clicked. So we ask the controller for whose turn it is. If it's the team that was clicked, we draw the, uh, the illustration stuff. We draw possible moves. So this way, if it's Black's turn and, you, and he clicks on a white piece, it's not going to show all of white's possible moves because that would just be a little strange is draw board control option. Of course, let's see, I haven't implemented this yet. Possibly use progressively deeper colors. I went over a little bit of what my plans for that are, what my plans, yeah, what my plans for that are in the previous video. So mouse released function. So this is our mouse pressed. And besides all the drawing stuff we've done, all we really have saved is a coordinate. So we know where the user first clicked down. For the mouse release function, we, we clear the selection layer. 
and then we clear the this is a set of coordinates of legal moves see when we were drawing all the possible moves we we got a set of legal moves from the actually let me walk you through this line of code legals so ask the controller for the board ask the board for the legal destinations of whatever piece is at this coordinate store them in a set called legals for each coordinate in that set draw a green square where it is so that's my English translation of those two lines of code the mouse released function okay so if get a move get a move it was my weird way of implementing because you don't want to be listening for a move if it's a computer player so if I were to check two computer boxes I don't want I don't want all this happening when I mouse release so if get a move basically means if basically you say if is listen mode would have been a better name for that variable so we're if we're in listen mode uh, get the scaled coordinate of where the user clicked so the same as normal get the piece that would be where the user clicked so we ask the controller for the board we ask the board for the slot at move start and we get piece so notice we're not asking for the board for the slot where we just clicked we're asking for the slot where the user originally pressed down not where we released move finish equals scale cord we're just saving saving the move finish variable that's why so piece to move is of course asking for the coordinate where the user originally pressed not where he released like I was saying earlier team enum turn I guess I'll show you the team enum class it's pretty simple class it's just an enumerated type you have white black and empty so the board the program thinks that when it when the program sees a slot it thinks that there are one of three teams on it it thinks that there's a white piece there a black piece there or an empty piece and it really does think this way and so what it's asking when I release here it's asking well is that coordinate where he's releasing is it occupied by an empty piece if it is then let him do it when I come here so when I come here it says is that coordinate occupied by a black piece then let him go there if it's occupied by an empty piece as you'd see like with this tile it's not gonna let me go there so that's a little bit of the way it thinks of course we have a nice two string method white black black and that comes in later with the the check notices when it will say something like the white queens being checked by the king I didn't want white to be all caps so I wrote a quick two string method back to the board view so if it's white's turn and we clicked on a white piece, um, set the move finish variable and say we're done getting a move. And getting setting get a move to false is the way the controller knows to pass the move start and move finish along to the game. If get a move is still true, it won't. It waits until get a move is false. So what these do, instead of just setting it to false right away, these make sure that Basically, if it's black's turn and a black's piece was clicked, go ahead and make the move. If it's white's turn and a white's piece was clicked, make the move. But if it was white's turn and they clicked a black piece, don't even bother passing that move to the to the game object, to the board object, because there's no point, because we already know it's not going to be legal. So and then we clear the coach layer, which of course doesn't do anything yet. Nothing under mouse entered or mouse exited. Uh, get move. Okay, so what this does, this is the function that the controller calls once we set uh, get a move to false to indicate that we're ready. The controller calls get move, and what we return is a new move object with the start coordinate, the finish coordinate, and a piece type of empty. And uh, this is a little confusing with the builder and the piece type empty. I'm going to make a whole video going over the move class. so. Just ignore that for now. It actually uses the builder pattern, which I'll make the video addressing. So prepare to move is waiting for move. Lots of housekeeping stuff, not really important. Mouse drag. So what this function does, I won't walk you through every line, but it draws, it, uh, it highlights, it double highlights the possible moves. And what I mean by that is when I mouse drag over it, you see how it changes color slightly? 
what it's doing is drawing a mostly transparent gray square wherever the mouse is. And that's how we get the highlight because I didn't want it to look like I wanted the user to know that by clicking and dragging he's doing the right thing. So the program's responding to his input by by coloring it. I didn't want it to just be flat so he wouldn't know if he was supposed to be clicking and dragging or not. So uh, I think it looks pretty nice the way it highlights. It's pretty subtle too, but yeah. Anyway, that's what this whole block of code does. It's shift down. Oh, I was going to make it such that uh, if you want to do the drawing part that I was talking about earlier, draw arrows, lines to illustrate things, you hold down shift when you draw. Um, mouse move, there's nothing there. So that does it for the board view class. Uh, thanks for watching, and next time I'll start to get into the, the, hmm, I don't know what class I'll do next.